All right, everybody set? All right, I call the 2359th meeting of the Milwaukee City Council to order. This meeting is being conducted in person at City Hall and by video conference. The public may participate in this meeting by coming to City Hall, joining the Zoom webinar, or watching on the city's YouTube channel or Comcast cable channel 30 in city limits. There will be opportunities for the public to speak during the community comment time and during the public hearing. If you would like to address council, you may come to City Hall. Seating in chambers is limited and speakers will be asked to leave after the part of the meeting you are interested in is finished. If you're interested in speaking, please let staff know by emailing ocr at milwaukeeoregon.gov for those on Zoom or submitting a yellow comment card for those at the City Hall. When it's time to take public comment, staff will monitor the comment cards, email inbox, the Zoom participant list, and chat. We will take comments in the order they are received and seen. Written comments may be emailed to OCR at milwaukeeoregon.gov. The public may also participate in Zoom webinar by phone by dialing 1-253-215-8782, entering webinar ID 831-8669-0516. And passcode 023745. If you're calling in through Zoom and would like to make a comment, dial star nine to raise your hand. Spanish translation services are available upon request. The public is asked to request translation and other meeting accessibility services uh, at least 48 hours before the meeting. Contamos con servicio de traducción al español cuando se solicita. Se solicitado. Se pide al público que solicite servicios de traducción y otros servicios de accesibilidad para reuniones por lo menos uh, 48 horas antes de la reunión. Translation services are also available in other languages. All right, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The city of Milwaukee respectfully acknowledges that our community is located on the ancestral homeland of the Clackamas people. In 1815-5, the surviving members of the Clackamas signed the Willamette Valley Treaty, also known as the Kalapuya Etc. Treaty with the federal government in good faith. We offer our respect and gratitude to the indigenous people of this land. Tonight's announcement, the city's annual bulky waste collection takes place on Saturday, June 11th and 18th. Uh, visit the city's website to review a map to find your pickup day and learn about what can and cannot be taken. Please keep in mind that the event is limited to single family residents with current solid waste services within the city limits of Milwaukee. Sojourner Elementary School's marimba band will perform outside the Letting Library on Saturday, June 11th at 10.30 a.m. Both fourth and fifth grade students will be playing high energy music originating from Zimbabwe. The community led Juneteenth celebration will be held on Saturday, June 18th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Water Tower Park. The gathering is an opportunity to celebrate, reflect and amplify back black voices in the city. All Milwaukee community members are invited and welcome to attend. Welcome summer with juggler Henrik both um, oh, Henry both Library Circus on Thursday, June 23rd at 10.30 a.m. Performance will be outside the Letting Library, weather permitting, and is intended for ages five and up. Lastly, the Milwaukee Arts Committee is hosting another year of Porch Fest events on Friday, July 15th, uh, July 22nd, and July 29th. Community is invited to create music from their own homes or walk and bike around the city to enjoy the sights and sounds. For details about each Porch Fest evening, including a map of performance locations, visit MilwaukeePorchFest.com. For 
For more information about each of these events and others, please visit the city's homepage at milwaukeeoregon.gov or call 503-786-7555. Um, I was trying to, I think the Milwaukee Museum is having something this weekend. Family friendly, I'm looking, uh, trying to check Facebook I, to see performance at the museum, 1.30 to 10, 3.30. Yeah. I, I was just going to say <clears throat> this Friday, Seth Welling Elementary School mm -hmm. is having their first community event in uh, over two years. And they'll be dedicating uh, the playground there and honoring Mr. Ah Bing. Uh, it's from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, they'll have Kona Ice. They'll have, uh, sorry, let me see. Food, Kona Ice, games, music. Uh, so if you're in the Llewellyn area, come on out. Yeah, I, th I thought that sounded like a great event, and I was sorry that I'm not going to be here to go. Um, the museum event is Saturday, June 11th, this Saturday from 1.30, at 1.30 and at 3.30. It's called Ms. Pearl's Variety Show. For people who don't know, last summer they started doing uh, outdoor family-friendly events once a month in the green space behind the museum. Um, so it's an outdoor thing. Bring your folding chairs and your kids and hang out. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure about the weather this weekend, but. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, we have no proclamations and we have no special reports. So um, community comments. This is a part of the agenda during which council will hear community member statements regarding city business. For those in person who wish to speak, please submit a yellow comment card found on the table just outside the door. If you are on Zoom, please use the raise hand reaction to alert staff you wish to speak. And when instructed to begin, click the microphone option to unmute yourself. If you're calling into Zoom and would like to make a comment, dial star nine to raise your hand. You may also submit a comment uh, via email to OCR at MilwaukeeOregon.gov. Before you make your comments, please state your name and city residence for the record. Um, if you would like the city to follow up with you, please submit your contact information to OCR at MilwaukeeOregon.gov. This council has other business items on the agenda this evening. Speakers will be limited to 10 minutes each because information provided during the community comments may be new to, may, may be new, the city manager will respond at the next council meeting to those comments that require follow-up. Before we begin, is there a follow-up from the May 17th community comments, Ms. Ober? There is not, but since I have the floor for one second, I also just wanted to call out an excellent pride event. Uh, this weekend, and I really appreciated the staff's involvement and our community coming together. Uh, I wanted to personally thank the mayor also for coming out and lifting the bollards. It was next to impossible to, to get those to work the first time, but we're learning a lot about the new plaza and it was really helpful. So uh, thank you to everyone who was able to come and it was a, a wonderful party. Thank you. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so do you have anybody online? No online, sir. All right. So I'm going to just invite all three of you to come up, just grab one of the chairs from the front row. And this has to do with the resolution that I sent out a couple days ago, and that's got formatted for us, and we have copies on our table. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Uh, my name is Gabriel Herbs. I am a staff representative of the Oregon Nurses Association. Um, and uh, to my right is Sarah B., uh, registered nurse at Providence Milwaukee Hospital and member of the ONA Bargaining Committee. And Julie Davison, uh, OR nurse at Providence Milwaukee Hospital and also a member of the ONA Bargaining Committee. We appreciate uh, City Council's time tonight, uh, the service that you all provide to the municipality, uh, the labor of City Council staff um, in supporting these proceedings, um, and the opportunity to talk a little bit about um, the struggle that we have been waging inside Providence Milwaukee Hospital to address um, really serious uh, issues with short staffing, patient safety, um, some illegal conduct by Providence, uh, and an effort to secure a, a fair contract that supports 
um, all of our goals around nurse retention, uh, patient safety for Milwaukee residents, um, and a compensation structure that rewards the uh, tremendous sacrifice that nurses and all healthcare workers um, have made for the benefit of all of our communities during uh, this pandemic, uh, which has been especially acute. Um, we have, uh, as Mayor Gamba referenced, um, uh, Mayor Gamba is proposing a resolution, is my understanding, um, to really go on the record uh, and let this employer know uh, that the outcome of these negotiations are a public interest uh, and that is the only acute care um, inpatient hospital facility in the city of Milwaukee, uh, that what happens at our bargaining table is truly um, bargaining for a, a common good and a public interest. Um, so I, I referenced uh, members of our bargaining committee. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, Sarah to talk a little bit about um, what's going on inside the facility from the perspective of a registered nurse and what that's meant for, uh, for patient care. Hi, so I'm a, a nurse on the med surge unit. I've been there eight years. I came as a traveler and just fell in love with the department. But over the last eight years, the staffing has been run leaner and leaner. We're being asked to take assignments that are beyond what we're capable to do in a daily shift. We're uh, being expected to pick up overtime routinely as opposed to replenishing with new nurses. When we hire a new nurse, it takes at least three months to train them to be able to work on their own on the floor. And we've been instructed through this pandemic to just teach them the bare minimum, whatever, as little as you could get away with to get them out on the floor faster. And even when we sit down with our, our safety updates and we express concern that this person's not ready to go onto the floor, we're told, well, they think they're ready, so it's okay, even though they don't know what they don't know. Every shift that I work is becoming the hardest shift I've ever worked. Yesterday hit me really hard. How many times I had to walk into a room and apologize to the patients. I'm sorry I can't get here faster. I'm sorry I'm not able to help you shower today. Like even that's the only thing you asked me for. It's leading to burnout. We're losing nurses faster than ever. Every day we leave feeling defeated. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Sarah. And Julie, um, wanted to invite you to speak a little bit about um, your time in the community and your role at the hospital. Um, thank you for letting us speak to you all today. Um, my name is Julie Davison. Um, I've been employed at Providence, Milwaukee since 2006. I am also a resident of Milwaukee. I've lived here um, in the, the wonderful city of Milwaukee since 2008. Um, my, I live 10 blocks from Milwaukee Hospital, Providence Milwaukee Hospital. My youngest son in 2010 was born in what's now um, the South Unit, Bed 7. <laughs> and um, I, to be honest, I think I've kind of lost track of the number of surgeries that myself, my husband, my son, what we've had at uh, Providence Milwaukee. Um, so I'm not just someone who delivers care. I'm also someone who has received care and I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to receive care at um, our neighborhood hospital. Um, I work in the operating room and as I mentioned, I have since 2006. Um, 16 years ago when I started at Providence Milwaukee, the nuns were still very much active in, in running the hospital. Um, when I accepted the position, I was with pride that, I mean, Providence had such a great reputation of being a pre premier facility, um, if not to the top notch benefits. And, um, you know, it was just a wonderful place to work. And at that time, I, it was also with pride knowing that the nuns, they had our back. They were looking out for us. Um, in those 16 years, our benefits have been chipped away. We've fallen further and further down on, on the pay scale. And although that seems like, oh, well, it's financial, it's also being able to retain and to keep nurses. Um, I've had massive turnover in my department. We've had, it's, it's a specialty, um, a new nurse without experience. It's six months minimum, if not nine months, if you're like a new grad nurse to get trained up so that you're able to function independently in my department. We've lost 
a third of our nursing staff, sometimes it was for several weeks, sometimes it dragged on for several months due to having to take a leave of absence because of burnout. A third of our nurses. Um, we've had new nurses that we've spent sometimes nine months training to you know, hopefully stay in our department that moved on to agency nursing that decided maybe the OR is not for me. We've had multiple people retire. We've had multiple people that were full-time drop down to the, the amount of hours that they take. Um, I'm worried, I'm concerned. I'm Besides not just the pride that I've taken in 20 plus years of nursing and delivering great care to my patients. And with that comes the experience and and knowing how to do you know a really excellent job taking care of my patients to, to truly ease their way when they're crying when they're upset they're they weren't looking they weren't this surgery completely took them by surprise and to, to reassure them and to let them know that i'm going to take my entire team is going to take very safe good care of you and now we have new grads so many of my Workers that were there when I started, they've all retired. There's only one other nurse that's been there longer than I have. Um, and a lot of these new nurses, that it's like a rotating door before they leave. And I want to know that my neighborhood hospital is going to be able to provide me with that same excellent care that I so proudly was enthusiastic to be a Providence employee when I started in 2006. Yeah, yeah, I think just to conclude, um, you know, nurses are in a real state of crisis. We hear this nationally, but in particular inside the Providence system. Um, as the companies become a multi billion dollar interstate behemoth mega corporation, it's been on the backs of care providers like nurses um, who are been on the front line of this pandemic, risking themselves, risking their family's health to provide just care. And for a company as large as Providence, we believe that there is a, a social contract. Um, if you're one of the most profitable healthcare corporations in the state of Oregon, um, you should furnish to the people who generate that profit and care for these patients um, an accord that supports their health and their uh, retention at the facility. Um, and I know for a lot of our members, it can feel powerless to fight a giant corporation like Providence. Um, and that's part of why we're here tonight. We see um, this is a public interest. We see the power that uh, elected bodies hold um, in letting an employer like Providence know that the people who represent our communities um, are just as upset as the frontline providers are uh, when they're in, enduring these conditions. So um, our ask is to duly consider the resolution uh, in front of you. Um, and our hope would be that um, either tonight or through continued conversation that that resolution could become a part of a city business, uh, which would mean a tremendous amount to our members and the patients uh, that they serve. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to feel any questions during this comment period, but we're happy to do so. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anybody got any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question. <clears throat> Are you having, you're having to choose basically which patients to take care of because you're just so short staffed? Is that? Yes, absolutely. Which interventions we'll be able to provide that shift and what you're gonna have to pass on later or what can we let go of? And I just asked that question to make make it a point that nurses are having to choose which patients to care for on a daily basis. Um, in the news, they reported that Providence reached a settlement or reached an agreement with one of the hospitals, but not with Milwaukee or not with Willamette Falls. Is that? I mean, that's still the case, I take it, since you're here. Yeah, they've, they've refused to furnish to our marketing committee at Providence Milwaukee or Providence Willamette Falls an offer that nurses feel like meets the, the urgent needs that you've heard about tonight. So yeah, that's still the case. Um, and of course, the tentative agreement at St. Vincent will still be subject to a ratification vote uh, before it is in effect. Right. Yeah. In any of these, um, other settings or other communities have city councils done resolutions like this? Yeah, so um, when nurses and healthcare uh, providers up in Washington were going through similar struggles with this same company, either directly with Providence or through their Swedish health subsidiary, 
um, Seattle, Seattle City Council uh, did pass a very similar resolution um, and, and very, very much under similar context. So the three hospitals uh, counselor that you mentioned have all authorized uh, strikes against Providence Health, um, which is really something nurses do when they are at the brink and see no other option, which is the case currently. Can you describe the process that will occur should the nurses decide to go to strike? Certainly. Um, so uh, based on federal law, um, healthcare unions like the Oregon Nurses Association are required to furnish to the employer and the federal government a 10 day notice before going out on strike. Um, so uh, when the bargaining committees in conjunction with the Oregon Nurses Association Executive Board determine that a strike is warranted, that 10 day notice would be furnished. It would be our interest in securing an agreement during that time. Um, the employer has already told us they will refuse to negotiate during that 10 day period, which is unfortunate, uh, but we remain committed to get an agreement um, either before, during, or after a 10 day notice is given. And, and what happens to the patients in the hospital when, when the nurses do go on strike? Certainly. So uh, the 10 day notice period allows the employer to contract either with um, third party agency firms that will bring in replacement nurses um, or with other area hospital health providers. Um, so for example, in 2001, when Oregon Nurses Association nurses went on strike at the OHSU hospital, <laughs> Um, OHSU placed patients outside of the hospital for care, for urgent care. Uh, they stopped elective surgeries uh, and then they brought in replacement nurses. Um, and, and I'll just say this, uh, we certainly, certainly advocate that patients would continue to seek care during a strike that they need. Uh, we're in the business, so to speak, of, of patient care, not denying it. Um, but at the same time, uh, if we let the status quo persist, uh, we have great fear about the state of patient care. Yeah, and I, so I think it's important to note that most of what they're asking for is addressing patient care, not, it's not their own benefits. Yes, some of it is to their benefit, right? Being paid at a decent living wage, which would then cause more nurses to stay employed, but much of this is driven around the fact that they can't keep nurses and therefore people are getting less qualified care, less care than they should be otherwise. I think um, it's, it's pretty rare in a bargaining situation where what, what they're bargaining for is actually the benefit of their clients, if you will. <laughs> Any questions or? Uh, I mean, as, as somebody who's worked in recruitment and retention of teachers, you're not asking for much. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's sad that it's come to this. Hello. Yeah, I appreciate the reference to education because um, I think broadly in our economy, we see um, a real disparity in the professions that tend to be overwhelmingly female yeah, it um, and professions that have similar experience in education. And so we see a huge pay gap there. And so in some sense, this is, there's, there's an important gender justice in the workplace element of this fight when you have a workforce that is 86% uh, female identifying. Uh, big, big angle there, similar in education. Well, is, especially in elementary school, Yeah. right? Secondary, middle school tend to be more men, they tend to get, it, it, the schedules are different. Elementary school, you're asked to do a lot more than a middle school or high school teacher and it tends to be female heavy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and if you hang out a little bit, I suspect somebody will make a motion. Okay, we will. All right, thank you. thank you. Thank you. I motion that a resolution of the City Council of the City of Milwaukee, Oregon, calling for a fair and just settlement of negotiations with Oregon Nurses Association, nurses at Providence Milwaukee Hospital, a community hospital owned by Providence St. Joseph Health. Whereas the registered nurses at Providence Milwaukee Hospital have always been essential for the health, safety, and well being of our community. And whereas during the ongoing pandemic, they have been on the front lines risking their lives and their families' lives 
provide quality, compassionate care to all in Milwaukee and surrounding communities. And whereas a 2020 report by the Oregon Health Authority demonstrates Oregon's nursing workforce is 86% female, and whereas a 2022 report from the United States Department of Labor demonstrates significant pay gaps exist between female dominated professions such as nursing and other professions with similar education and experience, and whereas since before the pandemic and consequently, nurses have been struggling with deteriorating staff to patient ratios, decreased resources available for patient care, rising healthcare costs and difficulties with recruitment and retention. And whereas the collective bargaining agreement at Providence Milwaukee Hospital expired on May 31st, 2022. And whereas nurses at Providence Milwaukee Hospital voted recently to authorize a strike nearly unanimously over the hospital's unfair labor practices. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Milwaukee City Council fully supports nurses' efforts to resolve unfair labor practices and secure an agreement which addresses ongoing patient safety issues, chronic short staffing, and market compensation disparities. Be it further resolved that the Milwaukee City Council respects the authority of all unionized workers, and on this occasion, especially those of the Oregon Nurses Association, to exercise the most fundamental right they possess to strike and withhold their labor. Be it finally resolved that Milwaukee City Council urges Providence St. Joseph Health to bargain in good faith through contract negotiations to reach agreement with our health care providers and avoid putting our community at risk of not receiving the highest quality care for patients and their families. Introduced and adopted by the City Council on June 7, 2022, the, this resolution is effective immediately. Do I hear a second? I know it's, it was an unusual way to make a motion, but it was actually, I think, effective to read the whole resolution into the motion. I don't think uh, I'm going to read the whole resolution in my question of the calling the vote, but... <laughs> A second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded to pass a resolution uh, from the City Council of Milwaukee supporting calling for a fair and just settlement of negotiations with the Oregon Nurses Association at Providence Milwaukee Hospital, a community hospital owned by Providence St. Joseph. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I guess I'm... Um... I'm a little troubled about the way we're handling this today and that we're not setting it aside for later in the meeting for discussion. Um, you know, usually things that are brought up like this are sort of placed at the end of the meeting. Um, I, uh, I don't want to, I mean, I do support labor rights and so I'm generally supportive of that, but we've never in my eight years on council weighed into a employee employer uh, dispute in, with a, in, in Milwaukee with a Milwaukee business. I'm a little concerned about um, doing that so precipitously. Um, I won't vote against this, but I will probably abstain from voting because I don't think this is the way we should do this. And I think it warrants more discussion and thought. Well, I see this as a public safety concern, mm -hmm. a public well-being concern that very directly affects the citizens that we all represent. Um, this is a relatively fast moving process. Uh, as was noted, they voted to authorize the strike and um, and are reaching an impasse. So for this to have any effect, uh, tonight needed to be the night that we brought it. Um, that's why I got it out as soon as I learned all of that. Um, and it is unusual, and I think in, in most cases, we wouldn't necessarily do this, but I think it is an unusual case in that it very directly affects the health and well-being of the citizens in Milwaukee. And I do think we should weigh in on it because um, it's, it's a critical piece. We, we saw over the last two years how very critical it yeah, was, and, and these are the folks that were on the front lines. And, you know, we all banged the pots and we all did all the things and thanked them on Facebook and blah, blah, blah. This is, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is, this is respecting them for the heroes that they are. 
So, um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Aye. All right, the resolution passes uh, three to one. Well, three, yeah. It's three to O. Yeah. Three O, okay. Yeah. Can I just say thank you for coming and for taking the step and doing this? Um, sucks that you guys have to still go through this and that it's happening right here in our community and affecting our community members. So I appreciate your bravery, your courage, and your fight and everything that you do for this community and for the people of this community. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, I had a visiting or traveling nurse staying with me for a while and heard a lot of stories about the attrition and nursing. And I know it's a t it's been a tough, I mean, even pre-COVID, it was a tough, <laughs> it was a tough thing, but it's been particularly tough in COVID. Well, thank you again to everybody. Thank you, for your support. No, you say oh. I move to pass the resolution. And you can read like this part. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, usually it's in our script, but yeah. because Mark added this this way is why it's not in our script. Usually you could just read the script and you can see what, the, yeah, whatever it says in red is what you're supposed to move. Yeah. I thought it was very long. Do you, <laughs> do you want a, a break for that or no? If we can just get past the consent agenda, then I can do it. Okay. After that. All right. Perfect. Five minutes. Do you have a correction on the consent agenda? Right. If we're, if we're moving to the consent agenda next. I will do the consent agenda next, assuming there's nobody online that's wishing to comment on anything. I'll double check. Nope. Okay. We just have a correction in the consent agenda tonight. Okay, it, is, it, is it in my script? Should I change it now? Uh, I just wanted to point out that there are three date corrections to be made in the, the resolution uh, 6B, making a number of appointments and reappointments to city boards and committees. They were all kind of set to 2024, but for the arts committee, Mark McCrary's term will end uh, June 30th, 2023. And on the library board, Deepak Kodatad, Kodatad sorry, and Sean Smith, uh, their terms will end June 30th, 2023 as well. The rest of the terms are accurate. So, so it doesn't really call a date on this. Yeah, on the script, there's no dates on it, just for the record when the resolution okay. started now. <clears throat> okay. People will look back and understand why the dates Great. changed on those ones. Perfect, thank you. Okay, Con tonight's consent agenda includes Minutes for the City Council for May 3rd, 2022 work session, May 3rd, 2022 regular session. Item B, a resolution making the following appointments. Sarah McCoy, Mark McCrary, Laura Steenson, Paul Manton, and Gabriela Ugarte to the Arts Committee. Mona Henry and Matthew Drake to the Audit Committee. Leslie Schockner to the Budget Committee, Corey Hester to the Citizens Utility Advisory Board, Cynthia Schuster to the Design and Landmarks Committee, Deepak Katatodad, sorry, I'm sure I butchered that, uh, Joel McElmore, John Smith, Carla Branson, and Ann Helliger to the Letting Library Board, uh, Sabina Spicer to the Park and Recreation Board, Amy Ert and Joseph Edge to the Planning Commission, Stephen Lashbrook, Christine Giotti, uh, Pam Denham, Elvis Clark, Jessica Peterson, and Shimron Tubman to the Public Safety Advisory Committee, and Alexis Barton and Christina Harris to the Tree Board. C, a resolution making the following youth members appointments. Reese Healy to the Letting Library Board and Jackson Calhoun to the Park and Recreation Board. D, a resolution acting as the Local Contract Review Board authorizing the execution of an agreement with Aldrich CPAS and Advisors LLP for professional audit services. 
E, a resolution acting as a local contract review board authorizing an agreement with uh, meter readers LLC for water meter reading services. F, a resolution acting as a local contract review board authorizing an increase in the project funding authorization for the construction of lake road improvements. Project CIP-2019-S20, dash dash G, a resolution adopting the 2021 water system master plan. H, a resolution adopting the 2021 wastewater system master plan. I, a resolution acting as a local contract review board authorizing execution of a Microsoft Enterprise Agreement and purchase of software support services from SHI International Corp. And J, a resolution adopting the 2023 work plan for the Elk Rock, or for Elk Rock Island. Does any member of council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? No, I'll, um, I do think there's one other correction to be made though, which is I believe we renamed it Community Utility Advisory Board. Uh, the council did express support for that and the CAB also expressed support for that. And we're waiting for that board to update their bylaws for that to become official. So, oh, so it's still- Yes, but not officially yet. Okay, okay, got it. All right, well with that, I will um, move to approve the consent agenda with the date corrections that the city recorder mentioned earlier. I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve tonight's consent agenda with the uh, date corrections mentioned earlier by the city recorder. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None heard, it passes unanimously. All right, public hearings. Middle Housing Land Division, Senate Bill 458, code changes and ordinance, second reading, file number ZA-2022-001. Uh, the purpose is to hear a second reading, take a, a final roll call vote. The public hearing on the proposed Middle Housing Code Amendment, file number ZA-2022-002 is called to order. On May 17th, council verbally voted on the ordinance amending the housing and parking code. That voice vote resulted in a three to zero approval of the proposed ordinance with one council member abstaining. Although the voice vote approved the ordinance, it was not unanimous and per city chartered chapter eight, section 31, the ordinance title is to be read at two different council meetings. City manager Ober, uh, read the title for the first time on May 17th, following the verbal vote of council today, the city manager will read the ordinance by title only for the second time, and the city recorder will pull the council for the final roll call vote on this ordinance. So, Ms. Ober, would you please read the ordinance by title once for the second time? Thank you. An ordinance of the city of Milwaukee, Oregon, amending the Milwaukee Municipal Code, MMC, Title 19, Zoning Ordinance, and Title 17, Division Land Division, for the purpose of addressing middle housing and land division per Oregon, Senate Bill 458, file number ZA-2022-001. Mr. Stauffer, would you please poll the council? Uh, Councilor Beatty. I'm abstaining. Councilor Nicodemus. Aye. Uh, uh, Councilor Kazrabadi. Aye. Mayor Gamba? Aye. Motion carried at 3-0 with one abstention, ordinance 2219. Okay, uh, do I need to close that hearing now? No. Nope. Okay. Once he reads that, I think you're good. Yeah. Okay. Solid waste rates adoption resolution. Um, public hearing on the proposed solid waste rates is called to order. Uh, the purpose of this hearing is to hear the staff report, take public comment, deliberate, and consider adopting changes to the solid waste rates. Does any member of council wish to announce an actual or potential conflict of interest? No. No? no. Unseen. Um, Assistance Finance Director McClung. Please. Good evening, Mayor Gamba, City Councilors. Thank you for having me. Uh, three weeks ago, we were presented with the solid waste rates for FY23. Um, we used Chris Bell, a consultant specialist in the industry. 
And if you recall, um, <clears throat> he proposed three changes, one in, uh, sorry, residential, commercial, and then commercial container. And the increases were driven primarily by the tipping fee increase this year of 7.3%. And then also on the residential side, there was uh, organic waste, additional charges and increases. Um, but there are no new developments or nothing to follow up on, I believe. Um, so with that, any questions? Do we have any, um, have we received any additional correspondence on the topic? Just uh, Chris and I followed up on uh, the questions around the idle time or not idle time. Um, yeah, that was it. Any questions for staff? Does anyone wish to comment on the proposed solid waste rates? Scott, anybody online? Uh, I'm checking now, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my computer lost internet for a brief second, so the folks on Zoom, I apologize, but you should be able to hear us now. And just to reiterate for those on Zoom, if you would want to speak on the solid waste rates, this is the time to do so. I don't see any hands raised, but maybe if we give it a quick second. Sure. Double check the inbox. Love it when the internet blips off and you leave the meeting and now you're back. I see no hands raised, Mr. Mayor. Nothing. Okay. Then I won't raise that entire diatribe. And you would have no response and still no questions for staff. All right. Then I would entertain a motion to close the public comment part of the solid waste rates hearing. I move to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed solid waste rates. I'll second. It has been moved and seconded to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed solid waste rates. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None heard, it passes unanimously. Uh, the public comment part of the public hearing on the proposed solid waste rates is closed. Is there any council discussion? Is council ready to vote? Yeah, it's always, it's never fun raising the rates, but I mean, these are pretty- Pretty nominal. Incremental. Yep. Um, I look back at those three years where we didn't have to raise them at all, but yeah, then we had a big jump after we did that. So I think the incremental is probably the way to go. Um, so I move to approve the resolution adopting solid waste service rates effective July 1, 2022. I second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the resolution adopting solid waste service rates effective July 1st, 2022. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None heard. Uh, it passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, fiscal year 2023 to 2024 master fee schedule adoption a resolution. Public hearing on the proposed master fee schedule is called to order. The purpose of this hearing is to hear the staff report, take public comment, deliberate, and consider adopting the updated master fee schedule. Uh, does any council member wish to announce an actual or potential conflict of interest? No. Nor do I, none seen. Mr. McClung. Thank you. Um, back in April, um, we presented the biennium uh, master fee schedule. Um, three changes to discuss with you. Um, on RS-159, uh, I told you last time that we were basically in initiating a credit card fee um, to recoup some of those costs. Um, since then, um, and as we get farther along with our uh, software uh, package that we're adopting, um, it wasn't quite feasible to assess or assign a 2.75% fee within. Um, so I worked with Sam Vandergriff, the building official, and we determined, or she determined, that uh, the average price for a single family home, as far as permits goes, is right about 28,000. And sometimes people do use a credit card for those. So we kind of capped, just made the decision to cap that amount at 30,000 and require that anything over 30,000 can't be used. A credit card cannot be used. 
So really it's not great, as great as uh, doing the fee, but this does give staff a rule to refer to when they have to say no or push people to pay via a different way. So really this is to deter people from paying and us incurring a larger fee. Why wouldn't we set that at 10,000 or something? Uh, so that they pay us with a cashier's check, right? Isn't yes. that what we'd rather? Sam didn't want to, uh, as far as the residential individual consumer to be impacted by that. So it was more to deter the developers and the larger scale uh, people. Hmm. But 28,000 for a single family residence. So she upped it just above that to kind of help the little guy, I guess, if you will. You all have the ability to change it if you'd like to. That was her recommendation. Yeah. So $28,000, the fees that we are eating ballpark at 60 bucks yeah 60 bucks mm -hmm. I mean if that's staff's recommendation I'm okay with it it just seems to me like it's not an unreasonable expectation to expect people to pay when you're talking about those kind of dollars to expect people to pay with a cashier's check or a money order or a Shoot, I think I paid mine. Did I pay him with a personal check? I mean, yeah. Can you pay him with a personal check? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Just nobody yeah. has checks anymore except old people. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, Mayor Gamba, it's about eight, six to eight hundred dollars, depending. Sorry. Oh, six to eight hundred yes. for a time. I thought that sounded yeah. low. I was yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay, I must have dropped a zero there. Um, it's a big credit line for a family to have also, okay. just so we're really yeah. clear. Yeah. So okay. I'm not sure how many residential customers are going to be able to cover it on a single credit card. Right. Um, and if you have a credit line of $30,000 on your credit card, you're not a little guy. Not typically. Well, yeah. But I mean, you know, if you have that on a credit line, you get miles for that. And so you, you want your miles or exactly. whatever. Um, yeah, that's a big difference. Do you all want to drop it down to 10,000? money. We can, it really is okay. It's not a big deal for us. It was us, I think we've heard from council several times to differentiate between a, a homeowner who's building something and a, a person who's used to doing major construction. So we've been trying to go along that path for fees, but I think Sam's probably pretty agnostic on this. She was trying to do what she would have assumed you all wanted. So I guess the other piece of information that you may not have, how, how often is, is there a, say between five and $30,000, are there fees collected in that realm? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I feel can give you that information. I know it's more so these last two years than anything, just because of the the rapid development. Um, yeah, I can see a lot of the five thousand and under because it's you know somebody putting in a new stove or put a new furnace or and all those things, right? Yeah, it's, there's going to be a bunch of those. But. Yeah, the, the building permits have been more remodel based or replacement based versus you know large new homes, right? So yeah, that, you, that was the bulk of Sam's. If you're, if you're, if you're paying $28,000 in fees, you're doing a lot of work. I mean, that's, you're doing a couple $300,000. Well, that's a new home. Yeah. That's the yeah, fee for a new, a new home. home. Yeah. Connecting to this, the SD All the SDCs sewer. and the permits, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and depending on the size of your home too, most homes aren't 1,200 square feet anymore. They're two to 3,500 square feet, 2,000. Yeah, so this is not something that you're just doing. So yeah, I'm I'm perfectly comfortable dropping it down to five. That's fine. I'm fine for That's thirty. I mean, somebody gets an inheritance and you get some money. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm fine with thirty, but I'm also I'm fine with five or ten. That's fine. It's a but it is I'm okay with five. Thank you, sir. Let's land at five. Five thousand? Yes. That's perfect. Thank you. Uh, second material change um, or update. Trees in the city. Uh, that starts on RS-167. Um, and Mayor Gamba, 
I spoke with Natalie this afternoon and we're working through getting some of the verbiage updated in the language. But um, the numbers as far as the fees and the amounts did confirm that with Natalie and that's, that is correct. So we're, we're getting through that. So just so the rest of council knows, we didn't include any verbiage around how to do, uh, that. this section also included the new code. It only had language around the old code. So we're putting in the new code language, but it's, it is, it's not substantial. It doesn't change any of the fees or any of anything else. It just helps people who are reading the schedule. It's just that introductory section there. Didn't, didn't mention private property. Um, yeah, the other, the other piece, generally speaking, that I wanted to talk to about on the verbiage, you know, we talk about a fee variance and waiver statement and things like that, and maybe it's in here somewhere, and I know it's in here in the, in the uh, charts or whatever you want to call them, where we're calling out specific numbers, but we don't at any point that I've seen, and I could have missed it, um, call out the fact that it is possible to get a low income rate. I would like to see that be really clear, bold, I like right at the top of the thing, because I think the people that need it the most are the people that are going to have the least bandwidth to look for it. So we'll add something. Um, we actually developed some of that language for the mailers. So we'll just add it into the tree code part. There is a section. Not just on tree code. I'm talking perfect. about the entire because we do it on water, we do it on wastewater, we do it on all those things, right? So right at the top of like very first page, you know, we talk about fee variance and waiver statement, that would be a pretty logical place to put that. Happy to, we can do that. Cool, thank you. Next add or change is on RS-171 under police. I can't remember if we talked about it before, but we were in the process of adding fees related to body worn camera footage and working with Chief Strait and Captain Burdick. You can see at the middle of the first kind of graph there and for police reports there, there's a body worn camera footage line added. And I really wanted to thank Captain Burdick for doing a bunch of research very quickly to try and figure out what the average rates were in the region. This is lower than the average rates. Um, I'm not surprised. To, yeah, we wanted to have a starting point without making it an, an impossible path for people to go down if they needed to pull the, the data. If over a year we realize that that's the wrong rate, we'll come back next time we do a fee schedule and we'll up it. But for now, it was a good starting place and we felt good about being a little lower than the average. And how are they provided? Now you have to talk to them. <laughs> You've officially gotten past what I can do. I mean, I guess by email, as an email attachment, I don't know. What, I mean, how, what, what, what form do they get provided in? So there's some different options depending upon the amount of video that's going to be released. If it's significant, we may have to do uh, some larger storage medium, but this should probably be a CD uh, or a thumb drive of some kind. Okay. Okay. Nope. No, I think you guys think you can do it for 50 bucks. That's awesome. That's... We just don't want it to be a deterrent from somebody yeah. asking for the right footage. No, I totally get that. Thank you. Cool. I don't have any other updates or comments. Thank you. Uh, okay, have we received any additional uh, correspondence on this topic? No. Does anyone wish to comment on the proposed master fee schedule? I see no email, Mr. Mayor, and I see no hands raised, and I see no more yellow comment cards. Okay, then I won't read all the rest of that. Uh, does council have any questions for staff? When we make the motion, how granular do we need to get on the various edits that we just... I would just say as staff has edited, so per staff's presentation. Okay. 
that case, if there are no more questions, I will entertain a motion to close public comment part of the master fee schedule hearing. I move to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed master fee schedule based on staff edits. Thank you. I second. It has been moved and seconded to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed master fee schedule. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None heard. Public comment part of the public hearing on the proposed master fee schedule is closed. Is there any council discussion? Well, I did find Scott's error that he promised us here in our motion. Awesome. It still says that solid waste rates. Um. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Master fee schedule. Oh. Yeah. It was kind of like an Easter egg hunt, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> uh, so if there's no discussion, I will move to approve or the resolution adopting the master fee schedule service rates effective July 1st, 2022 with the amendments discussed by staff in the presentation today. I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution adopting the master fee schedule service rates effective July 1st, 2022, including the edits noted by staff. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. Passes unanimously. Getting closer, but before I let him leave the dais, this is actually Keith's last meeting with us. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. He got a big job, and he's going to go be in charge of money instead of just, you know, hanging out with us, being the deputy. <laughs> so I'm really excited for him, and I just wanted to thank him for his service. I really appreciate everything. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, that. you've okay. done a great job. Where Where are you going? Uh, Malala River School District. <laughs> be in charge of money? Like, I'm gonna go be the finance director. Wow, awesome. congratulations. That's awesome. Dipping your toe in education. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> well, technically, he dipped his toe in local government because he's going back to his roots on this one. Yeah, I work for Salem Kaiser Public Schools, which it's still edu it's education, but it's night and day. It's forty two thousand students versus twenty five hundred. So, oh wow! Yeah, yeah, it's it's much different dynamic. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Well, good luck. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Might still see you. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> Hope so. All right. Um, are we at D? Can't believe we're at D. Like biennium 2021-22 supplemental budget adoption a resolution public hearing on the proposed biennium 2021-2022 supplemental budget is called to order. The purpose of this hearing is to hear the staff report, take public comment, deliberate, and consider adopting the supplemental budget. Does any council member wish to announce an actual or potential conflict of interest? No. Nor do I. None seen. Finance director. Hi. Do you have a new staff already? Or are you all on your own now? Uh, it, no, we have some good staff, um, but it's getting, feels really light, but yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't mean you were completely abandoned. I just, <laughs> your right hand. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But we have a recruitment going on right now and hoping for the best. So if anybody's listening, please apply. <laughs> Great, bye. Cool. Yeah, so um, good evening, Mayor and uh, City Council members. Uh, so the supplemental budget before each night um, is in accordance with Oregon budget law. Uh, when appropriations of funds are adjusted for more than 10%, it is required to hold a public hearing on those changes. And tonight, this really applies more for the building fund, um, where the building activity has increased over the biennium, resulting in a lot more permit activity, which then increased the contractual services for the um, uh, inspections that they need to do. 
So, um, so the, the supplemental tonight is going to include the increase in the contractual services line item for the building fund. Um, those fees are, those appropriations are obviously offset by the fees and charges that we have collected. And over the past two years, we have received a lot more in the building fund than we actually expected during the pandemic. Uh, additionally, into the building fund is also the cost related to the GovBuilt permitting system that we recently uh, received. So the building fund takes a technology fee um, and that technology fee, which is in the master fee schedule, which is also in the master fee schedule tonight that you adopted, um, is going to be used to help purchase for some of that um, cost related to the permitting system. Um, and that's just for the building fund uh, portion. So in total, the overall appropriations for the building fund has increased by 282,000, which is 25% of the original adopted budget. And then in addition to the supplemental, there's also two uh, budget transfers in the resolution. And the first one is related to um, moving designated dollars in the community development department in the general fund over to the public works administration department in the general fund. And that's related to parks and it's just related to um, the administrating of the parks is being done primarily in public works. And the second one is moving uh, PEG funds. Um, we're, we originally had um, purchased equipment and put it into the city hall fund, but it actually should be used for PEG, which is the public education and governmental um, fund that we received. Um, and those two transfers are uh, pretty minor um, in scope. So um, both of these uh, supplemental and the transfers were discussed at the budget committee meeting in April. Um, and that's all I have for the supplemental. Have we received any additional correspondence on this topic? No. Okay. Does anyone wish to comment on the proposed supplemental budget? Double check in the email, Mr. Mayor. I see no hands raised and no email. Okay. Does council have any questions for staff? Pretty straightforward. If there are no more questions, I will entertain a motion to close the public comment part of the supplemental budget hearing. I move to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed supplemental budget. I second. It has been moved and seconded to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed supplemental budget. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. The co public comment part of the public hearing on the proposed biennium 2021-2022 supplemental budget is closed. Is there any council discussion? Is council ready to vote? I move to approve the resolution authorizing budget supplemental for the 2021-2022 biennium. I second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the resolution authorizing the budget supplemental for the 2021-2022 biennium. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None heard. It passes unanimously. State Revenue Sharing Election Resolution. The public hearing on the proposed State Revenue Sharing Election is called to order. The purpose of this hearing is to hear the staff report, take public comment, deliberate, and consider electing to accept the state shared revenues. Does any council member wish to announce an actual or potential conflict of interest? Nor do I. Unseen. Ms. Dennis. Okay, so tonight you have two resolutions in front of you. Um, the first one is related to the state shared revenues, and these are state funds from liquor, tobacco, marijuana, and state gas taxes available for distribution to cities and counties. Um, they're certified, it's certifying that they are provided, excuse me, that the city is providing at least four of the mandatory municipal services uh, during the budget period, which is coming up as the fiscal year 23 and 24. And of which, of which that um, of those services, Milwaukee actually provides seven of those, which 
makes us eligible to receive the state shared revenues. The second resolution is state revenue sharing funds. And these are general monies of the state that are available for distributions for cities and counties. These funds require a public hearing in both the budget committee level, which we did on April 30th, and then tonight with um, city council. And uh, overall, we estimate that the city is eligible to receive about 2.3 million in fiscal year 23 and 24 combined. And these support general operations. State gas tax revenue is estimated at 3.1 million for the transportation fund. Um, earlier, Councillor Beatty had asked me about um, the last five years and we do have a, a schedule that shows the um, how much we've actually received in the last five years and, and where the impacts are with COVID. Uh, the one thing to note here is that we can't specifically spell out marijuana tax because of the Oregon revised statute. Um, so but in this schedule, you can see kind of where we're, where we're at um, for each of the, the categories. And really in 2020, the red highlighted boxes I tried to show, uh, this is where uh, COVID impacts really hit. So if you remember in fiscal year 20, we, we all went home in March. The negative 15% really does capture the, the three months in there. And then um, fiscal year 21 is when we really start seeing that drop off. And why cannot marijuana be called out? Uh, it's because um, marijuana is the uh, basically because they're proprietary and if there's not that many in the city um, uh, and so we can't disclose that information. Oh, publicly. really? It would yeah. be too easy for you to determine how, what someone's what, income is. Who is? And so, uh, but the state's share, I mean, there's two different numbers in there, right? There's yeah. What the state used to share with us before Measure 110 mm -hmm. and then there's our tax. percent yeah. tax and the state share shouldn't be contiguous or that's not the right word uh commensurate with we just have been told no we've asked him a m number of times i mean bonnie and i've gone back multiple times because it came up during the legislative session as to whether or not we could share the data we just have been told please don't share any of the data regarding the marijuana tax okay so it's not included in these totals it's combined in the total it's combined in the so okay so it's combined with liquor a cigarette and other tax. Cigarette. Ah, of course. It's other. Interesting. That's so is measure 110 taken effect yet in this? Or does it not take effect until next year? Um not really sure. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. Okay. I can't remember the timeline on that, can you? I thought it had taken, I thought I'd heard grumping, you know, grousing already about the reduced tax revenue. So I thought it had taken effect, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Huh. I don't know for sure. Okay. Okay. Um, I appreciate you pulling that, Bonnie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought it was useful to just kind of get a, it is. get a sense of what the categories are and how they have changed over time. It also shows in fiscal year 22, those are the estimates that we're actually still trending pretty low. So we're not, we're not quite making it up, especially in cigarette and other tax and state revenue sharing in total. So it's gonna take a while to catch up. Wait, 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 what's in state revenue sharing that's not in those other ones? So there's, that's the, the two different resolutions. So one is specifically um, the three categories of liquor, cigarette, and so forth. The other one is a pooled amount from the state. Um, and that includes also uh, cigarette, liquor, and um, marijuana tax in there. And that's based off of um, population side, size. Um, it's a whole calculation that the League of Oregon Cities gives us. Okay. Yeah. Have we, did I already ask about whether we had received any? <laughs> okay. No, we have not. Um, 
Does anyone wish to comment on the proposed state revenue sharing? Check in the email inbox, Mr. Mayor. I see no hands raised. I see no yellow cards. Okay. How many people are on Zoom tonight? At the moment, there's one person in the audience. Um, I move to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed state revenue sharing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed state revenue sharing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the... Where'd it go? There we go. Public comment part of the public hearing on the proposed state revenue sharing election is closed. Any council discussion? I move to approve the resolution certifying that the city is eligible in the 2023-2024 biennium to receive state shared revenues because it provided four or more municipal services. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution certifying that the city is eligible in the 2022 or 2023 to 2024 biennium to receive state shared revenues because it provided four or more municipal services. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the motion passed or the resolution passes unanimously. Okay. Oh, we do have to do a second one. Good catch. Thank you. I move to approve the resolution declaring the city's election to receive state revenue sharing funds, general funds of the state in the 2023-2024 biennium. I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution declaring the city's election to receive state revenue sharing funds, general funds of the state in the 2023 to 2024 biennium. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Okay, F. Oh, you're ahead of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> the biennium 2023-2024 city budget and capital improvement plan, a resolution. Public hearing on the proposed budget and capital improvement plan is called to order. The purpose of this hearing is to hear the staff report, take public comment, deliberate, and consider adopting the budget and the capital improvement plan. Does any member of council wish to announce an actual or potential conflict of interest? No. Nor do I. None seen. Is Dennis. Okay, I am pleased to report the approval of the budget um, for biennium 2023 and 2024 biennium. Uh, this is the last step of the process that we started many, many months ago. Um, and we continued, continued until May. Uh, starting in February, we discussed the capital improvement plan at a joint session with the budget committee and the citizens utility advisory board. Uh, and then we held subsequent meetings that we discussed um, and the development of the proposed budget and the elements that it contains. On April 30th, we kicked off with our um, official budget committee meeting and the presentation of the proposed budget. Uh, seeing as that um, this was actually the committee's first look at the proposed budget, um, we received a lot of comments and a lot of questions from the budget committee and we um, brought those back and uh, did another official meeting on May 7th um, where we held the public hearing as well. Um, the, through the deliberations and after the, the presentations from the department, the budget committee approved the budget. Uh, the appropriation of the, the, excuse me, the resolution appropriation um, for the balanced budget that you have tonight um, for the adoption of the budget includes an adjustment that staff is recommending um, to increase the Public Works Department by 170,000 related to parks items. Uh, the total city budget in the resolution would be 193,225,000. ,000. That's the only adjustment that we're um, outlining here. Other than that, everything that was related to the approval of the, the budget by the budget committee stands. 
Um, and this also adopts the capital improvement plan, including funded and unfunded projects. And it also includes the appropriating property tax levies at a rate of 4.1367 for fiscal year 23 and fiscal year 24 per 1,000 of assessed value <clears throat> for operations and bonded debt levy amounts of 860,000 for both fiscal years 23 and 24 respectively. Um, along with the adjustment, I did want to make clear that there was some minor um, adjustments just to balance out the budget, um, but the 170000 basically removes the total um, amount over policy level in the general fund. Now we're back to zero. Um, and that is all I have on the adoption of the budget. The other pieces is that we will come back um, post-adoption um, to budget committee. We hold those every quarterly. Um, and the next one is going to be in early August. That's all I got. Mayor, may I just make a couple comments? So the 170, I did just want to call out uh, after we made the budget, we had a discussion with you all about where you'd like to go with parks. So that is why we put the funding towards that is we have a number of things that you all have asked us to look into. So it's just gonna cost us some dollars and I wanted to make sure that we were transparent about that to the public. Uh, the other piece is we are recommending that we bump up the August um, quarterly meeting. So it is gonna probably be a week or two early. We're gonna send out an email to the budget committee but because of some things for our finance department, it just works better if we try and do that sooner rather than later. Um, so we'll be getting in touch with them probably in the next week and with all of you to find a date that works. Thanks. Okay. Have we received any additional correspondence on this topic? Does anyone wish to comment on the proposed budget and capital improvement plan? Double checking the email now. I see no hands raised and I see no yellow comment cards. You else have any questions for staff? If there are no questions, I um, will. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I didn't really have a question. I just wanted to say, I mean, just reprise what we said at the budget committee meeting, which is it's really solid document and it's really I mean in the eight years I've been here it's got become much more reader friendly much more transparent about what's going on there and um, I think staff gets a lot of credit and Leslie Schockner gets a little credit for that too and um, who's the chair of our budget committee so um, nice job thank you thank you I appreciate it There are no more questions. I will entertain a motion to close the public comment part of the budget and capital improvement plan hearing. I move to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed city budget and capital improvement plan. I'll second. It has been moved and seconded to close the public comment part of the hearing on the proposed city budget and capital improvement plan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The public comment part of the public hearing on the proposed biennium 2023-2024 city budget and capital improvement plan is closed. Is there any council discussion? So I would concur with Lisa that um, in the, whatever it's been seven years that I've been looking at these budgets, this is, it just keeps getting better every year. And this one is great. It was very, very easily understood and comprehended and good job. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. All right, is council ready to vote? Sure, I move to approve the resolution adopting the city of Milwaukee budget and capital improvement plan for the biennium commencing July 1st, 2022, making appropriation, levying ad valorem taxes and classifying levies pursuant to section 11B article 11 of the Oregon Constitution. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the resolution adopting the City of Milwaukee budget and capital improvement plan for the biennium commencing July 1st, 2022, making appropriation, levying ad valorem taxes and classifying levies pursuant to section 11B, article 11 of the Oregon Constitution. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 
opposed? None heard, it passes unanimously. And I, before we move on, if I can just ask, I know I just got here about a week ago, but with the budget, if, if we could between now and the next biennium, if we can challenge ourselves to find ways to reduce rates or not increase rates in support of the public, um, just because I know that we're still coming out of COVID, gas prices, inflation, everything that's coming up, um, all, all that stuff matters. So if, if we can just challenge ourselves to try to do something between now and the next biennium budget, that would be great if we can. Thank you. All righty, um, shockingly. We have reached the end. Um, after the regular session, council will meet as the Milwaukee Redevelopment Commission. The commission will meet in person at City Hall and on the same Zoom meeting. Don't go anywhere if you'd like to watch that meeting. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the City Council meeting. I move to adjourn. I second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Anybody want to take a break? Coffee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, take, take we, five minutes. We need a break. We can take a break. We'll come back at uh, seven thirty. Some of my sap. Oh, we are flying. Pardon? We're flying through this. <laughs>